Hello, and thanks for checking out my video, and welcome to my channel, Jersey Shore Pondscapes Videos. My name is Chris. Today's video is all about a pondless waterfall, um, but the little catch is the pondless waterfall actually kind of has a little pond. Um, so we're going to talk about why and why I chose to not dump the rocks, I mean the uh, water, straight into rock, and instead I gave it a shallow basin of water. Um, but I do kind of still want to call it a pondless waterfall because it really is not a pond. There's no fish, there's no plants in it. Um, it's basically a beautiful uh, waterfall feature. All right. So um, how this came to be was the, the homeowner had um, a big paver patio done here by the pool. There's a pergola on the patio and he had this open corner between the patio and the fence that he wanted to um, create this water feature in. So he went online, he got some pictures, he got some ideas, and what he ended up thinking he wanted to do was a, a spillway, you know, a water spill fall that um, came down into a riverbed that ran, you know, um, a little ways into and dumped into a basin um, of rock with a sump pump inside the rock that would pump the water back around to the waterfall. So he went to a pond supply store, he got an estimate on all the parts, they put this whole thing together for him, and then he says, you know, he goes, this might be more than I can chew. Do you know anybody that could install something like this? So um, they gave him my name and said, you know, Chris is the guy to call. So he gave me a call and I went over there and I met with him, and when he told me his ideas, and I saw his, the estimate, the list of uh, you know products that he he was going to purchase, um, it just didn't hit me. It's like I know what this is. I know what you're looking to create here. It's just not going to do anything in this spot. It's too small. It's you know, you have this um, beautiful patio. There's a pool off the patio, and then there's a house is beyond the pool, and it's a ways away from the house. You know, to this water feature. Um, and just doing a spillway with a little waterfall and a little river, it's just, I mean, it's going to use the space. It'll look nice when you're standing there, but it's not going to be dramatic enough um, to have a real effect, you know, when you're not standing next to it. So from the house and around the pool, it's not going to be very much. So I, I kind of, you know, got my little... Uh, brain going and we started thinking and talking about things and um, one main thing that he had expressed to me that he was really looking for was a lot of sound. He wanted a lot of sound. He wants to hear it, you know? And I was like, well, he, that's not going to happen because when you dump water from a, a waterfall down into a rock or gravel, um, there's not a lot of sound. You get a little sound from it, but it's not this dramatic waterfall splashing sound, right? So I'm like, yeah, you, that's not going to happen. You need to, you need to dump the water, spill the water into water, okay, to make that splashing a lot of splashing sound. So we came up with an idea. Um, basically, what I designed, since we're back in a corner, all right. Um, I wanted a big dramatic waterfall in the back, a big hot one to fall down that we can see directly from the house straight ahead, okay? Um, and then, I mean, so we're in this corner, right? So over here's the pergola, right? The house is straight ahead this way, and then the pool is over here. So we have this whole corner and I really need to be able to view this pond from this side all the way around to this side, right? We have to have this whole view. So a big high waterfall in the back corner dropping down dramatic straight toward the house with a little waterfall on this side just basically to give it some dimension, give it some, you know, shape, um, but not too high because I don't want to block that view from the pergola into the, the big drop, okay? So we did something small here. And then we came around to this side so we had the big drop and we came around this side we did another spill here and then we kind of bubbled out in a little semicircle 
and that semicircle now spills all the way around. So you have the big drop here facing the house, a small one here that just kind of brings a dimension and effect out here and faces the pool, and then this big semicircle which spills all the way around. Okay, so really cool design. So um, we got a lot of big boulders and, and uh, you know, the homeowner loved the idea and we figured out we'll do some free form pond thing in, in the bottom. And so, you know, we began construction. So basically what I did, um, we had a lot of stone dust around the perimeter of the um, pavers that had just been put down. Um, and you know a lot of that stone dust is excess but it's also support as well you know for the patio right so we wanted to remove a lot of that stone dust because eventually when we were done with the construction of the pond, we wanted to do some plantings around the perimeter of the pond, um, you know, between the pond and the patio and we don't want to put our plants in stone dust. So what I ended up doing was taking that stone dust out as much as I could, um, you know, without interfering with the integrity of the patio and using that stone dust as the base underneath my boulders, right? So to build it up a little bit and make a nice firm base under where I'm going to put my boulders. Um, then we started digging the pond out a little bit. And the excess dirt from digging the pond out, we used in place of where the stone dust was around the outside perimeter of the pond where we're gonna do our planting later. So that really worked out well. Um, once we had the pond, everything, the shape all done, I had the levels all set, we ran a laser, we ran all it off the patio to give our levels. Um, we started um, putting a, a heavy duty landscape fabric down, you know, so I put that down on top of my stone dust um, um, you know where we're going to do the, the boulders first as a little cushion then I put my pond liner down um, once I had the pond liner down I had um, extra pieces of pond liner that I got that um, we put down to double up um, in the areas where we were putting these big boulders so I had an extra piece of liner on top of my pond liner um, just as an extra cushion where we're putting the big boulders um, then we started you know um, making our concrete mix uh, we used a Portland cement with some mason sand and water mixed it all up we put a nice bed of concrete down um, under you know where our boulders were going to be on on top of that extra piece of liner and then we started bringing our boulders in one by one setting them in place um, i used a big machine we had a bobcat uh, e60 excavator um, and some nice heavy duty chains we chain up the boulders we pick them up we swung them over and set them set them right in place and one by one like putting together a puzzle you know we got the framework of our waterfall done um, once the framework of the waterfall is done, we came back the next day and we started doing, you know, I guess what you can call like the detail work, right? Um, using all the smaller rocks and stuff and, and concrete to fill in all the gaps and holes and stuff in between the boulders and making it all kind of seem together, right? Bring everything together, mortar everything in nice and tight. Um, we started putting our spillway pieces in and, and figuring out where our pipes were, our return pipes were going to be. And, you know, we cement all that stuff in. And little by little, you know, the, the waterfall became, instead of a boulder, a boulder, a boulder, a boulder, and a boulder, it all kind of became one flowing waterfall, right? Which is really, really nice. Um, I have another video out I just did recently on, you know, how to use um, concrete, um, you know, in ponds and stuff. And I have a lot of detail in that video as far as, you know, how we do all that cement work and, you know, fill it all in and make everything look nice. So you might want to check that one out. Um, but, uh, you know, from there, we moved on to the bottom. Now, the bottom, we did a layer of concrete as well with... Um, some of the flat field stones and um, large, you know, one to three inch uh, river stone set right in that concrete mix in the whole bottom of the pond. Now, the reason why I did that, as opposed to just putting a liner down and, you know, filling it with river stone gravel, 
is, you know, this is going to be more of a formal fountain, a water feature, um, more so than just, you know, a pond, right? Um, I don't put rock and gravel in the bottom of my ponds either because I use four inch bottom drains and that's a whole nother story which I have videos on. Um, but for this at least, this is going to be chlorinated and we're going to keep some chlorine in this. We're going to keep this a you know water feature more than a natural kind of pond. Um, I wanted the bottom to be nice and clean. So by doing a cement um, a pad on the bottom and setting all the rocks in it. It looks really natural, but when I need to drain and clean this thing in the beginning of the season or whatever we're doing, it's really easy just to pump the water out, wash it all down, you know, shop vac, whatever garbage out, and fill it up with water. I don't have all this loose graveling in the bottom of the pond that's gonna be collecting sediment and dirt and leaves and mud and muck and it's gonna start, you know, getting, you know, dirty and mucky, right? So um, that's why I do the concrete base. Um, we ended up putting a pit down in the far side um, of the pond um, with easy access. There's a big suction strainer down there with a uh, two inch uh, flex PVC pipe with a, a two inch check valve and the pipe uh, basically comes up the back, runs along the back of the waterfall. We have a um, half horsepower, 7,600 gallon per hour pump in the back. Um, it's an external pump. It runs on about three and a, three and a half amps or three and a half, four amps. Uh, again, 7,600 gallons an hour. And then we ran two inch uh, lines. We split it to five different return pipes. One on the small waterfall, one on the big one in the middle, um, one on the um, side, and then around this semicircle, we had two more on top of that. So a lot of waterfall here, a lot of water action cascading down. Um, once we got the pond done, we did some landscaping around the outside. We did our, you know, just some low, small plants. Um, the one large plant in the corner, um, we did a small um, southern magnolia. And then um, along the perimeter of the pool yard on the outside of the aluminum fence, he has uh, large maiden grasses. You know, every like 10 feet, he has uh, eight, 10 feet, he has a nice big maiden grass. So I kind of wanted to bring that grass theme into the pond, but I don't want to put these big, large maiden grasses here. So we used um, a smaller um, fountain grass um, called Hamlin. Um, we used three of those around. I had two variegated irises we put up on the side of the waterfall. Um, there's two rock, uh, low-growing, creeping rock sedums in there. And then we did three golden heathers in the front. So it's really nice because they're like an evergreen um, and they have a really nice golden color and they're not going to grow too big and tall, right? They're going to stay kind of low and it looked really nice in front of the pond. So we did all that, put our river stone in all around the outside, um, hooked up the pumps, got this thing running. Um, it looked awesome. Um, so you can see some of these videos here of, of it all uh, running. Um, the homeowner's thrilled. The sound from this thing is awesome. You can hear it from the house. Um, he told me his son made a really cool comment, which I really liked. I thought it was really neat. He said um, it re the sound of the waterfall here reminds him of when they go on vacation, like to the islands or something, and they they have a waterfall on the pool. And as like you know, in the morning you get up and you're walking out to the pool, and you can just hear the sound of that waterfall in the distance before you get to. To the pool so they can kind of anticipate this like you know um you know going out to the pool and seeing this waterfall and he says that's what it reminds him of um, so i thought that was a pretty cool uh, thing to think about um, so you know now he just goes out to his own pool and he can hear this waterfall by the pool so he thinks he's you know on vacation in the island someplace um, it's really cool. The only thing, you know, some of these pictures, not a big deal, but he did put some pool chemicals into the pond and it kind of foamed up a little bit. So in some of these uh, pictures where you see the foam, um, that's, that's what it is. Not a big deal. It will dissipate, um, you know, or will, you know, do a little water, put some fresh water in it or something. But uh, other than that, man, this thing is awesome. So I really, you know, um, was excited to do this job. I had a vision. I thought, you know, 
know, it would look beautiful here, be a dramatic waterfall, and um, it turned out really great. So um, thanks for uh, sticking around and taking, taking a look at the video. I hope that gave you some ideas and, uh, you, know, you know, maybe you get some ideas of building something like this yourself, right? So um, again, thanks for watching and uh, hopefully uh, we'll see you again in another video. So take care. Bye.